something has went terribly, terribly wrong here. My camera went out. Let's see if we can fix that. Hang on a minute, guys. I don't know what the... I clicked on my camera button and it didn't work. Hang on. Let me fix that. It says cameras being used by other app. What the hell? There it is. Cameras being used by other app. What does that mean? Camera better do what I say or I'm going to replace it. How about that? Oh, man. It's always something, man. Every stream, something happens. But you know what? It's a slight technical hang-up. I don't think people will be too upset about it. Man, don't y'all start with Javier. Or whatever his name was. The the guy that was stricken with the the BTM virus. It ain't his fault. Let me turn on my compensators real quick to make sure they don't start tripping. Yeah, homeboy, he couldn't help himself, man. But before I get started, is the mic working fine or do I need to turn it up or whatever? Because I have been playing with it a little bit, trying to change the settings. I didn't want it too loud because I put it closer to me now because it was farther back. But it's closer now, so I wanted to make sure, you know. <sighs> Fix it. Get all this damn stuff off my phone. All right. Look, guys, I haven't been on this channel doing any major stuff in a couple days. Um... Because you kind of get burned out talking about um, jump offs. So I had to give myself a few days of not talking about jump offs. But we're back as the, uh, the preeminent channel that talks about these people in the way that they should be talked about. Um, and of course, the way I'm doing it is... Uh, I'm not here to put black couples together. I'm not here to um, make the black family better or not. That's not why I'm here. It's too much of that going on on here. It's too many people who are trying to uh, get all these folks back together. Like, you know, Kevin Samuels keeps putting up these videos of, of black couples that he's gotten back together or something like that. And you know what? Congratulations. Congratulations. You've helped some black men ruin their life. That, to me, it's nothing to cheer about. It's nothing to cheer about that you found some black dudes that are stupid enough to get married to some black women. So, I don't understand why we all patting him on the back for that. If anything, we should be mad at him because you just helped these dudes ruin their lives. Because it don't matter how a black woman acts in the beginning. They all turn into jump-offs. They all turn into the kind of woman you don't want anywhere near you. And especially after they have kids. Once you, once they get children, they become a whole nother person. Um, I'm pretty sure we done all ran into some black chicks that act normal. Um, everything's cool. But once they get pregnant, woo wee Man, it's on and popping. They feel like they own you. Have any of you ever stopped to ask yourself, why do these black women treat black men like they are a construction project? I want you to think about it. Every time they get with a dude, the first thing they do is they start trying to make changes to the man. Like he's a Bob the Builder or a Builder Bear, where uh, they take this part away and add this piece. This, they always treat us like we're a project or like we're a puzzle to be put together. Every time you listen to one of these women talk and you ask them, why did you get with this guy 
who, who's considered a lower value guy. And they always say the same thing because they think they can fix him. They think they can change him. Why do you think so many of them get with these thugs? Because they think they can turn that thug into a husband and a, and a, and a, a dad. Um, look, guys, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. You can't turn a thug into a husband. But that don't stop these jump offs from trying. Now, the majority of them just skip that altogether and they go 100% for the rich guy or the guy that they perceive to be rich. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of these, these black folks on this website, they a lot of them, the men and the women, they all talking about how they're making six figures. I don't believe none of them because none of them ever show proof. And when you look at them on camera, all you got to do is look in the background behind them. People who make six figures don't have junky houses. People who make six figures don't have trash on the floor and they don't have a bed that's not made and all this and that. So whenever these people come on camera and say they make six figures, I just don't believe them because they never show any actual evidence of it. They just come on and say they make six figures. Um, last time I checked, you're not supposed to just take people at their word. Like me, I put up proof of, the, of my business. I put up proof that I go out and I service these contracts. I showed evidence because a lot of people was like, oh, he lying, he ain't doing that. So when I put up the video showing proof, there's like crickets. There's no sound anymore. You can't hear nothing because they got nothing to say. I don't claim to be rich. I've never claimed to be rich, but me and my family are comfortable and that's all that matters. One thing that I've learned during all this is trying to talk to these women is like, honestly, trying to, is trying to do, is trying to talk to a brick wall. I listened to a video yesterday where this chick was just going off, oh, ah, just screaming. Kevin Samuels is a danger to the community, blah, blah, blah. Anyone who says anything true about black women is considered dangerous. That's the way they look at it because it's that modern day womanism, that feminism stuff that they all do. You're dangerous if you tell people that there are better women out there than these women. You're dangerous if you tell people the truth. And here's a, here's a universal truth. I don't care how rich a black woman get. I don't care how famous they get. They all ratchet. They all ratchet. Y'all remember the football player Ray Rice and all the millions of dollars he was making playing for the Ravens? And y'all remember his, his million dollar wife that he had to knock unconscious in an elevator because she attacked him? All that money that she, that she had, living the good life, and what did she do? Ultimately, she turned into a ratchet hoe, got mad and accused him of cheating and started punching and kicking and spitting on the man in the elevator. So he knocked her ass out. And she was what we what we consider one of the good ones. Light skin, pretty, skinny. But she turned out to be exactly what they all are. They are all ratchets. Some of y'all don't remember the incident that Jay-Z had with Beyonce's sister in an elevator. Beyonce's sister attacked this man in an elevator. And she good looking, got money, all kinds of stuff, just like her sister. And she turned ratchet and attacked Jay-Z, one of the biggest hip hop moguls in the world. And in that very second, she turned into a ratchet and attacked this man, screaming and hollering, calling him a bitch and lame and a punk and all the stuff that black women do. That's why I told y'all, every last one of them are ratchet. It ain't just certain ones, y'all. It's all of them. They all got it in them. No one knows why she attacked him. To this day, it really ain't came out why she did it, but it was something going on. Maybe she was mad that Beyonce married him and not her. I don't know. All I know is, with all that money and all that wealth and all that good looks, she still turned into a ratchet-ass ghetto hoe. 
you don't have to believe me. I don't care if anybody believes me. You know, I'm not interested in your belief. I know what I know because I've seen some of the best looking, well off black women ever go crazy and attack people. I've seen it in the hood. Everywhere you go. So this idea that this not all argument or some of them are good or whatever. Look, man, I know I'm right. I know for a fact that all black women have this attitude about black men. They all feel like they better than us. And the reason they feel like they better than us is because they're jealous of us. They always have been. They always have been. Black men have been able to go out and fuck white women. We've been able to go out and fuck Asian women, Latino women. We've been doing it for we've been doing it since the 70s and 80s. Black women have been stuck dealing with black men. Because if you ask white men, Asian men, Latino men, they overwhelmingly do not want black women. And and like I said, I you can go and look at the dating stats on any dating website. 82% of men asked who they wanted to date on these dating sites. 82% of them said they do not want to deal with black women. 82% of all dating websites, these men said no. They don't even look at the profiles of black women. They want nothing to do with them. So, whether you believe me or not don't matter. There are actual stats out there that you can go read. There, there are actual charts and graphs and numbers you can go look at. That's just like one of the other things that they hate about black men. Interracial marriages are on the, on the increase in America. And the interracial marriages that are on the increase are ones where the man is black and the woman is another race besides a black woman. See, they can sit on this website and lie, scream and holler and get mad all they want. But the actual numbers are out there. You can go to blackdemographics.com and you can see the charts. Black men are marrying non-black women at a higher rate than ever before. Because men are starting to wake up. They're starting to open their eyes. All the stuff that they see and hear, they're, start, they're finally starting to put it together. What do you mean show the evidence? I've done several streams where I've shown y'all the evidence. I'm, I'm not finna do that. I've already done it. How many times I gotta put the, the same charts and graphs up on the screen before y'all believe it? I, I mean, we've done that for like three, four, five different live streams where I've put nothing but cold hard facts on the screen. I don't feel like doing that today, so I'm not going to. Like I said, I don't care if y'all believe me or not. I know the numbers are there. That's just like y'all didn't believe me about 50% of black women having herpes. But once I put the, the numbers up there from the CDC, y'all were like, oh shit, he's telling the truth. But yeah, exactly. Thank you, Joey. Go look it up yourself. I'm literally telling you websites you can go to to see these things. But y'all don't want to look. Y'all just want to consider, y'all just want to treat people like they're lying. Y'all want everybody to come on here to pretend, or y'all want us to pretend like, y'all want us to pretend like it's our job to educate y'all. It's my job to get on here and talk. It ain't my job to educate y'all. If you don't want to go and look this stuff up for yourself, that's your business. I don't care. I know what I'm talking about. I've looked at the numbers. I've read the facts and figures. And I know for a fact, being with a black woman is probably the second most dangerous thing you could do in this world. The number one most dangerous thing you could do is spend your time hanging around niggas. Because... The numbers are there also. The more time you spend around niggas, the greater your chance of being incarcerated or killed. The only thing more dangerous than that is being with a black woman because black women lead black men into those same problems. Exactly. Everybody got a, everybody got a, a smartphone. I Look, there are days where I put stuff up on the screen and then there are days where I don't feel like it, okay? I didn't get home till six o'clock this morning because I had to go to a job that's like um, two hours away from my house. Not to mention I had to work in 20 degrees last night. 
So when I got home, I was tired. And I'm still tired now. Only reason I'm doing the stream is because it was scheduled already. But I, I'm I'm exhausted. So I'm not finna go hunting around on websites finding shit that y'all can go look up yourselves. See, a lot of y'all want me to do it, not because y'all don't know how, but because a lot of y'all are scared of what you'll find. A lot of y'all are afraid to go look it up because you don't want to see the truth. So y'all will tell me to go find it and put it on the screen for you. That ain't going to soften the blow. Me finding it or you finding it ain't going to soften the blow. The truth is still there. You got a right to deny it. You got a right to say it ain't real. That's fine. Go for it. You guys know me. I don't care what y'all believe. While I was uh, while I was working last night, I had my headset on because I was by myself last night, which is unusual. But I do do jobs by myself sometimes. And I was, you know, I was listening to my headset while I was working, and um, I was listening to Kevin Samuels last night talk about beta males and um, alpha females. Guys, let me tell y'all something. This whole alpha beta conversation is one of the dumbest things I think that I've ever seen, I've ever heard. I don't know why everyone likes to use internet terms, but let me tell y'all something. I'm not alpha, I'm not beta, I'm none of that shit. I'm just a grown man. That's it. I'm just a man. All these other words don't mean nothing to me. And all you people who run around using these words, Y'all think they mean something. They don't. They're just words, people. If you are secure in what you do, if you are out there making your paper, you out there taking care of your family, you don't need these stupid internet titles. I noticed in that live stream, though, Kevin Samuel said he's going to start copywriting people for, for playing his videos or reacting to his videos or whatever. Well, he's going to be doing a lot of copywriting. Because he's got thousands of people reacting to his videos. So he's going to be doing a shit ton of copywriting. Honestly, I don't, I don't have a problem with him doing that. It's his content. He got a right to tell people to not use it. But it's something that I need to see real quick. Oh, okay. I see what he did. That's a smart move. Now I see why he made that announcement last night. Well, no, I guess not. Here, let me show you guys something real quick. This is the reason why... I don't understand why he did that. Why he made this announcement that he's going to start copywriting people. But let me show y'all something real quick. Let me blow this up so y'all can see it. Do y'all see right here? All of his videos have this on here. Whenever you put up YouTube videos, you have a choice. You can make your videos to where people can't copyright them or, or where people can't use them. Or you can set your videos to this, Creative Commons, which means anybody can reuse your content. So before he can copyright somebody, he needs to change his license because he got his license set for, it says right here, Reuse Allowed. If you set your videos to Creative Commons, that means anyone can use your content. So his threat to copyright people is kind of dumb because he made his videos to where other people can use them. It's right here. And so y'all don't think I'm lying. There it is. That's his video. There's his name. Creative Commons. So you can't threaten the copyright people if you made your content available for reuse. It's right there on his channel. If he, t if he changes that and he makes it to where people can't reuse his stuff, then he has a point. You know, then he has a point. But right now, it's his own fault. 
because he said his content to be reused. And I'm sure all the people that are doing reaction videos to his content, they probably saw that and said, oh, wait a minute. He can't copyright me because his shit Creative Commons. I made that mistake once before. I had my asset to Creative Commons and didn't realize it. And and um, that opens you up to have your stuff reused. But I'm going to tell you like this. After hearing what he said last night, he said that he's going to copyright people and he's not going to remove the strike off their channel regardless, blah, blah, blah. Look, man. And I think this is probably going to be my first time really criticizing this dude. The con I like your content, but I don't like the bitch nigga them of threatening to flag people. See, this is what happens when you get the big head. Before he was getting all these views and making all this money, he wasn't talking about copywriting people and flagging people's channels. But now that he's breaking in the dough and now he's getting views and his channel's growing, um, now he's getting the big head. So now he's threatening to copyright people. So I have to 100% say that I am not on board with that. That's bitch nigga shit to me. If you confident in what you're doing, you don't have to sit up and, and threaten the copyright motherfuckers unless they are blatantly stealing your shit. Like if they taking your videos and just reposting your video without any kind of commentary, then you got to write the fair, I mean, you got to write the nail them. What I do is fair use. I actually do commentary on his video. I don't just play the video and let it keep running. I stop the video. I give commentary, this, that, and the other. I never just play the man's shit straight on through. Like Now, there are some people that do that. Let's keep it real. There are some people who just put his video up and play it. Those people deserve to be, be hit with a copyright because that's just straight up stealing. But there are some people who actually react to what he's saying, and that's not. That's fair use. But he said he don't care about fair use. He don't care about none of that. He's just going to start striking people's channels. Totally disagree with that. I totally disagree. If somebody is reacting to your content and they're they're following fair use guidelines and you flag their channel, that makes you a false flagger. That makes you a false flagger. And you guys know I ain't down with that. But you know what? Out of respect for what he said last night, I'm not going to play no more of his videos because to be honest with you, enough people been riding his nuts to begin with. And it's plenty of other videos out there. There's plenty of other videos out there to, to react to that revolve around this topic. Not every single video has to be somebody listening to Kevin Samuels. Yeah, he's 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 on the rise. He's, he's big and famous and blah, blah, blah. But the very second that he threatened to start copywriting people, that's when he lost me. You guys know. I'm not I'm not loyal to any one person at all on this website. I'm only loyal to my family and to myself. So once you, if even if I like your content. When you pull some shit like that, and he done it, he done it twice in the stream. He done it two different times. It's like the first time, I guess he think people didn't hear him or something. But the second time, he reiterated, "Oh, I don't care what their excuse is, I'm gonna flag them." So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play his videos no more. Not because I'm afraid of getting a copyright, but because I lost respect for the dude when he threatened to copyright people, and I'm man enough to say it flat out. And I know he he go he goes at people. He trashed some people last night who talked about him. Um, it's a channel that I actually look at, a channel that I watch. Uh, they were talking about him, and he trashed the hell out of them. And they really didn't say nothing that bad about him. But still, I see what's going on here. The same thing that happens to, to a lot of these guys who get some insta fame is happening to him. Okay, because he's been on he's been on YouTube for what three four years. And his videos wasn't popping like they are now. But ever since he told that girl she's average at best, boom, he blew up. And the ego blew up with it. But look, let me just keep it real because you guys know. Let me keep it 100. Because I don't give a damn if people like me or not. But let's just be, let's just be honest here. <clears throat> you guys know Simposaurus Rex. The guy that simps hard. I don't like that guy because I think he's, he's a sellout. I don't like that guy because he's giving people family advice when he has two baby mamas and he pays child support. I don't think that you have the right to give me family advice when you're not taking care of your own family. 
you're sending a check to the government. You're on YouTube trying to make money to keep paying your child support because you don't have a job. So I feel like you don't have a right to tell me nothing about a family. I'm a working man with a family that I take care of. So I'll never listen to somebody like him. Kevin Samuels is entertaining, funny. A lot of stuff that happens on his streams are funny as hell. And these women that come on there are unbelievably stupid. You 52, you've been divorced twice, and you found some Insta fame on YouTube. So no, I'm not going to take your advice. I don't agree with his advice anyway. This advice of telling black men to find high value black women. No, that goes opposite to what I believe. I believe we should be getting the hell away from him. So I've never, ever thought about following anything he says. I watch him for pure entertainment, just like most of y'all. Most of y'all don't have no intention of dating or marrying a black woman. That's what he pushes on his channel. He's trying to help black couples get together. But out of his own mouth, he's only managed to get eight black couples together. All these millions of views, all these videos, and you've only managed to get eight couples to, to get together. Okay? So you're not exactly a success. Because there are white dating coaches who have put thousands of couples together. He's only managed to put eight couples together. So that don't make him a pro or an expert. He's just another nigga on YouTube raking in money because he got he went viral. Okay? That's it. He went viral and he's taking advantage of it. Congratulations. I don't hate the man at all. But the very second that he threatened to copyright people... I was done. I'm not, I haven't even clicked on his channel again because I don't believe in that shit. I don't. You can come on here and do what you do without copywriting and flagging people's channels. Y'all know I, I look at that as player hating. That's the way I see it. Because you're going to flag somebody and take away their ability to make money on their channel. But while you busy making yours... I don't mind people making money, but I do mind when you get in the way of other people making theirs. And look at this fag talking about stop hating. Bitch, fuck you. Because I've been a fan of the man's shit. And I agree with the stuff that he says. So I'm not hating at all. But I am right when I say threatening to flag people's channels is fucked up. And that's what he did last night. And once he did that, I stopped watching. I got a right to watch what I want. But see, bitches like you who caught up in the wave... Or sucking another man's dick online. As soon as somebody criticizes them. Y'all call it hate. Nobody is so big. That they can't be criticized. Nobody. I don't give a fuck who you are. Ke Kevin Samuels is not so fucking big. That he can't be criticized. My criticisms are, are. Legit as anybody else's. I tell you what guys. I tell you what. As much as we like the content, the entertainment value of the content, I want to ask this question. How many of y'all are going to take advice from a 52-year-old man who's been divorced twice? Let's just say you're at the grocery store and a 52-year-old man with two ex-wives walks up to you and starts trying to give you advice about women. Are you going to listen or are you going to turn around and walk off? Let's be real. Let's be real. Ain't nobody going to do it. The only reason y'all listen to him is because he's on YouTube. That's the only reason y'all listen to him. That's the only reason I was listening to him. As soon as he said he's going to start copywriting people, I was turned off. Because I don't think it's right to sit on here and flag people's channels for following fair use when they react to your content. I don't agree with it, guys. That don't mean that I hate Kevin. That don't mean that I got beef with him because I don't. I don't hate him. I don't have beef with him. I just don't think it's right to sit on here threatening to flag people for reacting to your videos. Because that's what he did last night. He said, I'm going to copyright you and I'm not removing the strike. And he said, ignorance is not an excuse. He said, even if you didn't know, he's still going to copyright you anyway. Go listen to it if you, if you don't believe me. He said it himself. So... As a, as a fan of his content and somebody who has reacted to several of his videos, 
I got a right to say, all right, fuck this. I got a right to say, all right, I'm done. Exactly, EDP. I done reacted to some of your videos. It's EDP, is, he got 2 million subs. He's bigger than Kevin Samuels. If he wanted to, he could copyright anybody. He, I've reacted to several of his videos. He's never once sent me a fucking copyright. That's what I'm saying. If you put yourself on the internet, then you got to expect this kind of shit to happen, especially if you go viral. So now that he got the big head, now that he getting all these donations and shit, now he wants to start copywriting people. Sorry, you lost a fan. I never sub to his channel anyway because I don't sub to people. I watch folks, but I don't sub. And you guys know that. Y'all, I've said that for years. I quit subbing the channels. I just watch shit. You're still going to get views whether I sub or not. So that don't matter. But, like, I'm not telling any of y'all to stop watching Kevin Samuels. I'm not telling y'all to avoid his channel. I'm telling y'all that I stopped watching and I'm avoiding this channel. Because as a content creator on here, I don't like it when people threaten to flag other people's channels. Without just cause. Now, it's okay to say, stop uploading my video. Like, if I take one of your videos and I upload the whole damn video with no edits, no, no commentary, no nothing. I just strip a video off your channel and put it on mine. That is 100% copyright. And you got a right to flag me for that. But if I put up your video and I do an actual reaction to your video where I stop the video and give commentary and then you flag me for that, Listen, I know that. I know that. But here's the thing. A lot of people don't have the money to take a copyright to court. And that's what he's counting on. He's counting on the fact that the people that he flagged don't want to fight it. Now, you guys know when I get copyrights, I fight them. That's how I got my, uh, that's how I got the copyright strike removed from my main channel. You guys remember when that Shaman X dude flagged me? I, I took the shit all the way. And YouTube... Removed the strike off my channel and reinstated my channel because I took it to the limit. So you're not going to false flag me. Exactly. Reaction channels are part of the reason why he went viral. So many people are reacting to his content that it made him go viral. Because what happens after you watch a reaction video, guys? You go straight to the channel that they were reacting to. You go straight to the channel that they were... Every time y'all see me do a video... Y'all go to the video that I was reacting to. Reaction channels, even though I don't really care about them or like them that much, well, certain ones like Tyrone Magnus, reaction channels help smaller channels go viral. They help channels like him go viral. But I don't even care. I'm going to back to my point. I'm not going to watch his shit no more. I'm not going to play his shit no more on my streams. And I'm going to take his advice, which I was already doing it anyway. But after he threatened to copyright people, he said, make your own damn content. That's what he said afterwards. I've already been making my own content. You know, whenever I react to a video or whatever, that's only a small portion of what I do. And you guys, y'all know how many channels I have. And y'all see on all those channels, I don't need to watch other people's content to make videos. I've done six and eight hour live streams where I never played a single clip of someone else's content. So I know how to entertain my crowd. I don't have to play his fucking videos. I just don't like the fact that he threatened to do that shit and he feel like now he got that ego, he can just, just blatantly threaten people. That's cool. You got that, Holmes. No hate at all. Like I said, I don't hate him and I'm not encouraging people to, to not watch his channel like that shoemaker dude did. I'm not going to tell people that. Y'all watch what y'all want to watch. But I still think my point is valid. And you got a, a YouTuber here with 2 million subscribers, EDP, that agrees with me. Threatening to, to copyright people for reacting to your videos is fucked up. And that's my only complaint with Kevin Samuels today, is you're threatening to copyright people simply for reacting to your content. It's going to backfire because if you shut down the reaction channels, they're going to turn on your ass. And they're going to start reacting to videos of people that hate your guts. 
and then those channels are going to start blowing up. All the, the anti-Kevin channels are going to get big because you're going to alienate all the people who like your content. Look, guys, why do you think I don't waste energy copyright people? I got the copyright ID thing on my channels. Every day when one of these losers up, uploads one of my videos, it pops up on my copyright ID thing and it tells you if the video they uploaded matches yours. I got five videos on my thing right now, 100% match, where these trolls just took my content and re-uploaded it. Still ain't copyrighted them yet. And they just ripped my video and re-uploaded my shit with no commentary or nothing. And I still ain't copyrighted because I don't give a fuck. Exactly, thank you. All the way back to the you dig, the, the Tommy Sotomayor you dig. I'm glad it's some people around that remember that. It's some people around that remember I was I was like a main guy on Tommy Sotomayor's podcast called the You Dig back in the days when he first started letting people come on to talk. I got popular as hell on there before any of this. Way when the black sector was called the black sector, now it's just called Black YouTube. But it was called the Black Sector back then. And I was one of the main stars in it. So long before this dude came along and started talking about black women, I was already doing it with Tommy Sotomayor and some other dudes. He's just the latest flavor of the month. Okay? Kevin Samuels is the flavor of the month. He ain't the first one to do this. And he ain't gonna be the last. He just went viral for telling a black woman that she wasn't as pretty as she thought she was. That's it. I've been telling these bras from the get how ugly they are. I don't care if I go viral or not. Oh, yeah. You really think people are going to get to see your comment? Honestly? <laughs> this guy, look at this. Another loser. He just three. He said he's going he gonna to slap the shit out of me. How? How you plan on making that happen? Without being shot first. See, I don't I don't slap box with little dummies. I shoot niggas. I'm 44. I don't I don't stand out in the yard and slap box and fight. I shoot niggas. EDP, you know what I'm talking about. If I when I answer my door and it's somebody I don't know, I ain't never seen them before, I answer my door with my pistol or my shotgun. The first thing you see when my door opens is a barrel. Who the hell are you? Why are you on my porch? That's it. That's how I answer the door. Because I know crazy people exist on the internet. So that's how I answer my door when you knock. I'm from YouTube. Oh, really? Well, I'd like you to meet my friends, Smith and Wesson. They like to say hi. Ain't nobody trying to hear all that. Who the hell wants to get out in the yard, put up your dupes? You really think I'm finna get out in that muddy ass grass that's been raining for three days? You really think I'm finna get out there and, and fucking get my clothes dirty? Come on, buddy. Put them up. Put them up. Man, I'm finna blow your fucking brains out. You got your damn mind. You think I'm finna get out there in that yard doing that stupid shit. Like, these little young dudes, they love running their mouths. Oh, I'm gonna kick your ass. Really? Wow. Ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. <laughs> How you gonna kick with your kneecap blown off? It's gonna be pretty hard to kick me when that shotgun, you picking them shotgun pellets out of your ass. Ain't nobody got time for this. Please, I dare you to come to my house. I dare you. Show up in my crib if you want to. That's going to be the last time you see anything ever. Because I promise you, they're going to be scraping you off my porch. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody with it, man. They, they almost got the pizza delivery guy shot. Whoever the loser is that keeps sending Pizza Hut to my house, you almost got him capped off knocking on my door at 1030 at night. Don't nobody knock on my door that late at night. So as soon as I open the door, I'm like, who the fuck are you? What the fuck you want? I didn't order no pizza. You better get to stepping. You better get to stepping. All right, all right man, ain't nobody worried about these dudes, guys. He, Look, my address has been docked so many times. You guys know I ain't. I, there's no fear whatsoever. And I'm going to tell you, even when I'm out of town, they still in danger. 
Because if y'all think y'all gonna come here and mess with my kids, my woman is more dangerous than I am. One thing I'm gonna tell you, don't mess with a woman when she's trying to protect her kids. You mess around and die real fast. She'll blow your brains out quicker than me. If I hesitate, she'll take the gun out of my hand and shoot you. She'll be like, what the fuck you waiting, what you waiting for? Give me that. Wow. She will blow your ass away. So I ain't even remotely worried about it. Because I know, I know one of y'all one day going to be stupid. I know you're going to be stupid. I know you're going to try it. And you gonna, you know what you're going to get to tell your friends? Nothing. Because they're going to be they gonna be at your funeral pouring out pouring out some liquor for their homie. What's that old song? This one's for my homie. That's what they're going to be singing at your fucking funeral. When that gangster lean in that gangster lean. Because I'm going to shoot your ass if you come to my house. I promise I'm going to murder you. No if and buts about it. I'm going to kill you if you come to my house. So I'm begging you, please, please show up. Because one thing I love about my state is we have the stand your ground law. We also have the castle doctrine law. Please show up. I'm begging you. That'll be the most fun I've had in years. And you know what? I might even let you live. I might just blow your foot off. That way you have to walk around with, with a nub the rest of your life. That actually, you know what, now that I think about it, that might actually be a better solution. Yeah, what, what better, better than killing you, you get to walk around with a, a prosthetic foot the rest of your life. Or what if I just blow both your feet off? Bet you won't go to nobody else's crib. Look, guys, I tell y'all all the time, man, don't be scared of these people on here. If somebody docks you on here, don't be scared of these folks because they never going to show up. People dox people on here because they think that they can scare you off the Internet. That's all it is. It's a tactic to try to get you to, to shut down your channel and go away because they think, oh, if we put out his personal information, he's going to get scaled and leave YouTube. Please. They've been trying that shit on me for years. Every time we move, every time we, we get a new crib. Oh, here's his new address, guys. Okay, what's that going to do? I'm still on here, and I'm bigger than ever. People still come to watch me. You ain't saying shit. Uh, hang on, let me activate this phone line real quick, because I know it might be somebody want to call in and say something stupid. Or I might get lucky and somebody call in and actually want to say something that matters. You never know these days. But I saw a video um, a couple days ago where this dude is uh, walking around in the mall with his phone out. I'm sure some of y'all have probably seen it because I know a lot of y'all guys watch that stuff because I posted it in the Discord. Um... Dude walking around, he had like a microphone on his phone or whatever. And he walked up to these two black chicks and he said, uh, rate yourself. And they both said 10. And one of them looked like a cheeseburger. She's a black chick with long blonde hair. And I mean, she was ugly as all get out. And the first thing she said is, I'm a 10. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait. I said, no matter what you do. I said, no matter what you do. They always rate themselves a 10. That's why I said we need to stop using the number system. No more number system. We need to say, rate yourself between ugly and hideous. Rate yourself between dolphin and whale. You know what I mean? Rate yourself between rhino and elephant. Let's stop giving them numbers. Because if you give them numbers, they're just going to keep saying 10. I don't know why anybody would even bother with that. Let me get this line started up. I mean, ugly as hell talking about I'm a 10. This woman on this screen behind me is a fucking 10. If they don't look like this, they ain't a fucking 10. I don't give a shit. That, you're not a 10. That gun behind her looks better than them bitches.
Start your show now. Press one. Your show is scheduled to start in 17 seconds. How to fuck somebody already on hold. Your I... show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. It's somebody already on hold. And I wasn't, the shit wasn't even active yet. How the hell can you be on hold already? That's it. I mean, y'all just saw me activate it. And as soon as I activate it, it's somebody. Off. Let's see who this is. This got to be the fastest caller in all of time. This nigga broke the sound barrier to call. Hello. What's going on, brother? How the hell did you manage to call before the line was live? Man, I don't know, man. Maybe it's because of the, the, the city and state and shit. I mean, maybe my time is like uh, a little bit different. It's like a delay or something. But <laughs> when I when I first hit the link, when I first called you, uh, you had, it, it, from my end, it looked like you had hit it for about a minute or two. Oh, okay. I mean, I just, I mean, I just activated it. That's why I was wondering. Like, my name usually appears on the the top of the screen once it's active. But when yeah. I started, your name was okay. sitting where my name normally is. That's why I was like, "Who the hell is this?" <laughs> but either way, what's up, man? What you got yeah. for me? Oh man, shit, man. I'm calling in, man. And, you know, man. Say, uh, first off, you know, I want to do, you know, talk about what you're talking about, and and say, you know, I fuck with your show, man. You, I love what you talk about. You preach the truth. Uh, I support everything you talk about, man. These fucking, these fucking niggas and nigga bitches got life all the way fucked up all the time, <laughs> every damn day of the week. I, I, I mean, shit, man. I, honestly, I've been looking. I, it's been so long since, other than Tommy Sotomayor, there's nobody else preaching this kind of truth. Well, look, like I just got done saying, Kevin Samuels did not start this. He gets credit for it. You know, everybody pretends like he's the first one. But there's some people who remember that myself, Tommy, and some other people, we were doing this back, like, in 2017, 2018. Like, we were doing this way before he got popular. So, I look, I congratulate Kevin. This ain't another. I'm just not watching his content no more because after he threatened to flag people's channels last night, that did it for me. And you guys know, he ain't the first content creator, creator that I stopped fucking with. Once, once you threaten to flag people for looking at just shit or whatever... I stopped fucking with you. It ain't nothing. It ain't no hatred involved. I just decided right. I don't like people who sit up and threaten to flag people. If you can't take the heat, get out of right. the fucking kitchen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I fuck with Kevin Sevens. I, I, I watch him every time he goes live. I even watch him on Instagram. He, 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 he's a, he, he tells the truth. You know, I, I like what he's saying. You know, what he, that was kind of some weak shit, but I do understand because it's a lot of people that's cloud chasing. They riding his nuts. They are riding this dick like it's a form of transportation. Well, I agree so, with I agree with that point. That's see, I, there are two reasons why I'm not gonna play this shit anymore. I don't like the threatening to copyright people shit, but also I agree that too many people on this man's nuts, and that's part of the reason why I slowed down on fucking with his content as far as reacting to it, because I do agree too many people got his name in the title of their videos, too many people playing his shit. So I agree with that. But I don't think flagging people is the way to go. I think it's going to backfire on him. Uh, what? Well, yeah, well, I really don't know. He he's kind of getting big. Out, like his, his like you can tell his ego is like definitely is like on Pluto already. Like he's he's going there. He's, Look, he's the best the best way to destroy the best way to destroy your credibility and your channel on YouTube is to turn into a false flagger because it's false flagging if they're you if they're complying with fair use. And you flag them anyway, that's a false flag. There's no quicker way to destroy your, your channel than to false flag people. I'm telling you, you if know, he starts doing that, it's going to backfire on him. You you made a point earlier. You said, would you walk, if you was in a grocery store, would you let a 50, well, 50, I don't know. A 52 year old man? Would you let a 52 year old man just give some advice on a relationship and he's been divorced? But, like, when you say it like that, no, no. Hell no, but it's like... Well, like I said, the only reason you're listening to it because it's on YouTube. Like, yeah, but it's a lot of people I listen to on YouTube and I quit listening to them. Look, here's the thing. 
We listen to things and people on YouTube that we would never listen to in real life. Okay, how 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 much time would you spend listening to these black women scream? If if a black woman walked up to you and was screaming about how terrible black men are, how much time would you spend listening to that? Zero. But you'll still well, listen to them well, do it on real, YouTube. In real life? Yeah, in real, in real life, life I, I would hope that a, I, I would hope a nigga bitch I would hope a nigga bitch <laughs> say some shit like that to me. I've been wanting to slap one of these hoes for a long time, honestly. But my, my point is the same. You wouldn't tolerate that shit in real life. So why do we tolerate it on the internet? That's my point. The internet has made it made it um it's a safe space for people to run their fucking mouths. Because they know if they did it in public in, in real life, they would catch hell for it. And my point is this. I, I like Kevin. I like his message. I agree with majority. The only part of his message I don't agree with is trying to reunite black men with black women. I don't agree with that. I think black men should, we should cut our losses and go to other women. Other than that, his message is solid. But at the same yeah, time, I feel that too. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to support a dude who's, who's threatening to copyright people. Okay? So I, I personally just going to stop watching and I'm going to stop reacting to his content. That don't mean I hate him and that don't mean I'm telling other people to hate him. It's a personal choice of mine because I don't support copywriting people. I, j I just got done I dealing with a false copyright on one of my other channels. I had to wait for three weeks to get this strike removed because this guy false flagged me. That was three weeks where my channel was taking a beating. Three weeks where I was losing you subs and views. You talking about that black bag? That black bag that was that that faggot? That motherfucker? No, nah, it was a different guy. It's a um it was um his name is Shaman X. It's a, it's like a little uh, he's like a anime channel or something. I don't even know, because he's not even on YouTube anymore. But the point is he false flagged me with a copyright and it took three weeks to get it removed. And when you have a when you have a copyright, you can't live stream for ninety days. Ninety days, nine zero. So when I lost the ability to live stream on my channel, it hurt my channel because the majority of my channels are live stream channels. So if you can't live stream, right. you're fucked. Like imagine if this stream, imagine if this channel couldn't stream. If I couldn't stream, we shitty. wouldn't be talking right now. I would be shitty because your channel is like funny as fuck, but you tell the truth. Like, but I, your shit's entertaining as hell. I'll be shitty as hell. I'd be, I'd probably get off YouTube. Look, most people are in the ch in the chat right now. They watch Kevin and they, they like his content. It's entertaining as fuck. I don't disagree at all. But my guys will tell you, I've never told people to not watch somebody. No, I specifically say it's my personal choice. Has nothing to do with them. I'm choosing to not watch his content and not support it because I don't like the whole I'm going to copyright people thing. And that's from where the, his ego getting too big. I am going to sit back and watch the fall, though. Because you know what the old people used to say? Pride goeth before the fall. So if he starts copyrighting people, you're going to see some bad shit. Because what's going to happen, like I said earlier, these reaction channels that are helping him go viral, if he starts flagging them, they're going to start doing reactions to the people who don't like his ass. They're going to be like, all right, Kevin's flagging me, so I'm going to start reacting to these videos, talking shit about him. And then those people are going to start growing. Then he's going to have even more, tr more trouble. And then his fan base is going to shrink. Because people are going to label him as a false flagger. I'm telling you, once you get hit as a false flagger, like I tell you a good channel, Mundane Matt. Mundane Matt, his channel is dead as a doornail because he got busted live on the air, false flagging people's channels. He still hasn't recovered from that shit. His channel is dead as dead can be. And he has like 200,000 subs or something. He can barely rake in 1,000 views on a video. He killed his channel okay. doing that shit. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I hear you, man, I, and, and I respect that, man. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth now. My, my personal opinion, I think Kevin Samuels is a is a necessary evil out here because it's too many of these black whores that are out here just saying anything they want to say unchecked, and then when you actually get on the panels or when you actually call in one of their shows, they talk over you, they hang up on you as soon as you start making points because everything they say, any of their arguments is easily debunked, easily, easily dominated. Like, they say the most shallow stupid as shit like they mm -hmm. don't even really have an argument they just sound like a bunch of angry nappy head hair had it bitches yeah mad that don't nobody want to fuck them well look they single mamas they can't i agree i agree i agree in total with you 
he is a necessary evil. But honestly, I don't think he's evil. I don't. I think necessary evil is mis is is misidentifying him. I don't think he's evil at all. I don't think he's trying to be evil. I think he's just simply telling the truth. That's what I call what he does. Well, evil to them. Yeah, I just evil think he's them. telling. The, look, you know, I tell the truth too. I tell you guys even more truth yeah. than him. Because not only do I tell you how bad they are, but I go the extra step of telling y'all to avoid their asses with everything you can. Everything that's in you to avoid Absolutely. them. That's the, that's the, that's the step the that is, I go to that Kevin don't go to. He's trying to reunite black men and black women. He even brags about all the couples he's gotten together. That's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that's, I'm telling yeah. black men you can do better. Listen, guys, you can go look up the stats. Black men who date interracially have better lives. They have better outcomes. You can go look up the data yourselves. I'm not making this up. Black men who, da who date and marry white women, Asian women, any woman except a black woman, they make more money, they live longer, they have more successful lives, they have better children. You can go look it up yourselves. I ain't got, you ain't got to believe me. I, I, I believe you, shit. Me personally, I just like to fuck. I like fucking with any bitch. And then I fuck with all these bitches, you know. I, I mean, seriously, you know what I mean? I mean, I, look, I if you're still banging them, all I can tell you is just make sure you strap up. Because you do not want to be in child support court. <laughs> you damn straight. Because, hey, you're look, if you get you get hit with that child support, that's that's it. That's it. You done. Yeah, I don't have any kids, man. I made it to 30 without any kids, man. So, you know, I'm happy about that. I'm wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You made it to 30, no kids. And you messing with she booms? You living dangerously, ain't you? Man, you know, I net in a lot of throats, man. A lot of faces, man. I, I paint a lot of faces, man. They call me. Call oh, okay. Me the them, okay, face. well, that, that's smart. If you just blasting in their face, then I get it. But, hey, uh, you did see yeah. that stat I put up from the CDC that that, that half, half the black female population has herpes. Ugh. You, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, no, I put I the stat up all the time so, so black dudes who still mess with them can understand the risk that they Ash. taking. Half? Hold on a minute. I'm putting it up on the screen right now. If you're looking at the YouTube feed, you should be able to see it. Right there. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> yeah, that changes your whole perspective, don't it? All I can tell you is be careful. <laughs> if, if you're still messing with them, be careful. Hey, I'm going to tell you something, though, man. Between you and me, man, I've never had sex vaginally raw. Now, I know you can get herpes any other way, too, but... You can, get, you can get herpes from a blowjob, dude. If they got yeah, that man, shit and they good, suck your like dick, you can raw. get herpes. Yeah, it's, 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 man, it's, it's, it's flesh to flesh and fluid to fluid contact. So, either way, you can still... I'm just telling you, be careful. I mean, I ain't telling you who to screw. That's yeah, your business. Man, they fucking ghetto gaggers. They on there drinking pee. You know they ain't shit. This person said, can you get off so I can call? You can call right now. It's a waiting room on here, dude. All you got to do is call, and when your number pop up, I'll answer you. Damn, it must be really important. Well, look, I got somebody on hold that's been on for 10 minutes anyway. Let me get to this other caller, man. I appreciate you coming in. All right, man. Thanks, right, bro. Take care, man. All right, let's see who this person is. This ought to be good. Hello. Hello? Not much. So what's up? Hello? Yeah, you're on. What's up? I was just saying, I'm new to your channel, and uh, I'm just trying to figure out like what, what kind of content that you make. You just do live streams? For the most part, yeah. Okay. Every now and then I do videos, but it's mostly streaming. Okay, what, like, what, um, goddamn, what kind of, like, content? Because right now I see you talking about, like, black women and stuff. Is that, like, well, it depends what, what on which one of my channels you're on. I have, a, I have an anime channel. Like, I have a political channel. I have a channel where me and all my fellas stream together on a podcast. 
it just depends on which one of my channels that you're on. On this particular channel, okay. it's about the black community as a whole. It's not just black women. It's about the black community. Oh, wait, wait, wait. All right. I, yeah, I see. So you pop around the channels. So, uh, like, what, because you're on this topic right now, we got to get into it. So, like, what is, uh, like, what is your thoughts and opinions personally about, like, black women? Avoid them. With 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 all avoid them. Well, avoid them with everything you have. Now listen, if you can't, Gosh. if you live in a neighborhood yeah. where you don't have access to women of another group, then I recommend Pornhub uh -huh. or X videos. But if you want a disease or you want child support court, then date black women. Oh, weird. so uh, what? Like, what made you come to that conclusion? I'm just curious. It was just always like that, or? Like something happened to you. Did nothing happen to me. I've dated them in the past a long time ago, and I realized what they were before I was stupid and kept dating them. See, a lot of you guys have limited experience with black women, so you don't understand. But mm -hmm. probably before you were born, I was dealing with black women, and I learned back then that they were ratchet, ghetto, and all they cared about was money. And if you didn't have any money, they dogged you out. But as soon as you got some money, you were their favorite person. I have detailed experience in this area. So I just decided to treat I them the way they treat us. They treat us like we're dollar signs. Wait, wait. So I treat them I treat so, them uh, like trash. Why do you why do you listen? You you sound like you're coming from the, the black woman perspective. Why else would you ask me what they did to me? They didn't do shit to me. I just sat back and watched them. No, I, saw they, like, I saw what they I saw what they are, and I avoid them. So let me I, ask you about your mother. What, what about her? Mother? My mom. My mom is an excellent woman, hardworking, took care of all of us, did she everything that a woman's supposed to do. Is she a black woman? Yes, she is. Or is she, are you mixed or something? My mom is a black woman. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. My dad black is black mixed. My my granddad on my dad's side is a white man. Oh, uh, so you. What you like identify like you identify as a black man? No, I identify as a helicopter. Of course I identify as a black man. I'm just asking <laughs> you point. No, not a lot of people be like, you know, my granddad. No, listen, I, I'm what you call a coon. I'm what you call an Uncle Ruckus. Uh that's what that's what you want to hear, right? That's what you want to hear. Why don't you just ask I that asking. rather than asking all these other mundane questions? The truth is you want to know if I'm a coon. Yes, I am. I don't like niggas. Nah, for real, for real. I just, I like, I like understanding people. Like, you know. I don't well, know here, let let me give you some understanding. You know, I don't like niggas and I don't like ratchets. Black people, I love. I love hey, my people. Stuck, bitch. Fuck you, nigga. Fuck look, bitch, look, nigga. listen to him, y'all. If I see you, I'm the nigga in the comments. <laughs> I'm the big ass nigga in the comments. Hey, you I knew this. Hey, y'all hear him? You got to up in the street. You got to up in the. Y'all hear him? I knew he was gonna do that. I already, I already knew he was going to do that. This is hilarious. That's why I muted him. I already knew he was going to do that. I was just waiting on him to do it. See, this is the thing, guys. If you're going to be a bitch, just do it up front. Don't try to pretend. I'm not scared of you guys. All you had to do was just be a man and come out and say what you wanted to say. Trying to do this shit is dumb. And, I mean, did y'all hear? If I see you in the street, nigga, you ain't going to see me in the street. I actually have a home that I live in. The only niggas you see in the streets are broke niggas like you. I don't spend time in the streets. <laughs> oh, great. This guy is back. What do you want? <laughs> we got a pro black in the house. Look, man, I don't understand why people don't get it. I don't have to like black women. I don't have to care about them. And there is no amount of trolling that you can do to make me care about them. Okay? I have been avoiding black women longer than some of y'all been alive. So you don't have a right to call in and tell me I should care about them. Hello? Hello? Oh, great. This guy is back. 
Oh my god. Hanging up. If you don't have enough sense to answer the phone, I'm hanging up on you. I don't care about all that trolling stuff. Hello? Hello. Hello, am I on? Uh, I hope so. Good. Uh, this is my first time calling, man. I've been in the chat of Commander Tuvok. Okay, I see uh, you. I just, yeah, I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. I'm just going to say I agree with you 100% that uh, Kevin Samuels is trying to bring black men and black women together. I don't want to see it. And I've been married to the same black woman for 30 years. Respect. You, you, black. you found one back exactly. in the days when black women were good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I love her to death. We got four kids and ten grandkids. Well, so, that's what these guys don't understand. Yeah. When they ask me about my mom, my mom is old school. Mm -hmm. My mom is what black women should be. My black, my mom has mm -hmm. never, ever played the modern black woman game. My mom don't believe in this feminism stuff. She can't stand women who believe in this stuff. Yeah, and, and she not alone, because I can't stand them either. Hey, that's all I wanted to say, man. I appreciate it, bro. You know 100%. you. You welcome to call in anytime. Now, now that I know who you are, I know you know your profile and stuff. Just whatever you got to say, man. You know me. I I respect you. You you like me. You understand the difference between these these black women today versus the ones that we grew up with. You know what I'm talking about. Like these people that call hey, in man, and think I man. hate all black people. You're totally wrong. I hate these ratchets and these thugs. They the only ones I don't like. <laughs> they the only ones both of us don't like. <laughs> exactly. They don't get it. <laughs> he just hates his own people. No, I hate them creatures that are pretending to be my people. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this right, man. Hey, man. Blessed day. All right. Thank you, brother. All right. Who the hell? This Maverick dude. What are you talking about? You talking about he, 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 he who are you talking about? Me? Are you accusing me of never having a woman when you have literally heard my woman live on the air? So you're going to sit here and lie like that. So how quickly do you want me to ban you for lying? Because you know that's against my rules, right? I'll give you one chance to change your mind and then I'm going to ban you. Because you know that's a lie. You have literally heard my woman live on the air. You've heard her voice. Come on, dude. Be a man and tell the truth or I'm going to ban your ass. 10 seconds, and then ban him. If he can't be honest, ban him. Because you ain't going to sit in my chat and tell lies. 10 seconds and get rid of him. Countdown clock done started, buddy. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hey, um, hey, NBA. I've been watching your stuff for a while. And, um, and... I come from a family of, uh, I'm a mixed person. I come from a black father and a white mother. Uh -huh. And see, I'm hearing what you're saying. And um, yeah, I've been experiencing the, the type of uh, ratchets that you're talking about. Because I work with, um, I work with uh, those types of women at my workplace. And and hearing what you're saying and seeing what they're doing really is opening my eyes a little bit. Well, my sons are mixed, and I don't encourage them to to avoid black girls like some people think I do. Because one of my one of my sons is is like talking to a black girl at school. I haven't once told him not to. I just informed him of the possible dangers, but I never told him he couldn't. So, the like if you're hearing it at your workplace. Then I, I I'm interested to hear to hear what kind of ratchetness you've been hearing at work. You ain't got to give us their names, but what kind of stuff have you been hearing them say? Because I'm pretty sure I know. Um, I'm a um, I'm a COVID screener at a hospital. Okay. So usually we don't have too much to do. We just sit around, check people, um, check their temperatures, and send them up. Um, so we don't have a lot of backbreaking labor work we're just sitting around and talking and stuff 
Yeah. And um, yeah, I hear like a lot of like gossip and stuff talking about what their relationships are like because they're they have a relationship with the other black men, and um, yeah. It's oh, like I see. I see what they yeah. doing then. Okay, I get it. Let me tell you what they doing if you haven't figured it out. Because I've seen this before. Whenever black women work with a man who's mixed, bright skin, nice hair, all that, they always mm -hmm. talk about black men that they're dating. But it's not because they're actually dating. It's because they're trying to get your attention. Let me guess. They talk loud so you can hear everything they're saying. Am I correct? You are definitely okay. Me. I know what they're doing. They're trying to, they're trying to show you that they're girlfriend material by claiming to have a boyfriend. Because the one mm -hmm. thing that a black woman cannot resist is a light skinned brother. I'm telling you, the fact that you're mixed, they. Pro I'm surprised they haven't been all over you. But they, don't believe them when they say they got boyfriends. Listen, man, four out of five black women are single. That's a that's a stat you can look up. They don't have boyfriends. Mm -hmm. They're saying that shit around you because they're trying to impress you. That's why they talk loud. I bet you when they on the phone, they talk loud too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I know. Listen, man. I, I've I've seen this before. I understand where you're coming from, and I'm gonna tell you straight up. As a mixed dude, you got options, man. You got more options than I ever mm -hmm. had. Like I tell my sons all the time, they got a million more options than me. You can date anybody you want, dude. If I was you, mm -hmm. I would go white or Asian or Latino. I I would go that route. And if you can't make it with them, then circle around and try to find you a good black woman. But don't start with them because mm -hmm. if you start with them, they are going to try to get pregnant because you're mixed. They, I'm telling you now. Mm -hmm. if, if white guys and, mm -hmm. and mixed guys, they love trying to get pregnant by y'all because they think they're going to have a baby with that pretty hair. Like my sons. My mm -hmm. sons have amazing hair. I can't stand them niggas because they basically nicer, better looking versions of me. <laughs> I love them, but I don't like them. I can't wait to kick their asses out of my house. But I listen, be careful, brother. And listen, if you find a fine ass black woman with no kids and, uh, you know, making money and she don't act ratchet, mm -hmm. go for it. Go for that. Okay. But if you can't find that, because just. I have no interest in any of these. Uh, oh, okay. Damn, um, he just if, said I don't, if I don't see any, if I don't see any good, um, pe uh, good woman in like the United States, shit, I'll go overseas then. Well, you know you can you can have like Asian women mail ordered and brought to you, right? Like they ship them over what, here, and what, all you gotta okay. do is get them a green card. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I'm well, just saying. I, I appreciate talking to you. Yeah, I appreciate the call in. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> look, guys, I I don't even know that guy. But I accurately deduced what's going on. They talking loud, talking about their boyfriends, talking about their relationships, because they got a mixed dude working with them. They trying everything they can to get that dude. That's why they pretending to have boyfriends. That's what they do, y'all. That's what they do. They Thank you, Joey. They want DNA, dick and attention. Every time, listen, by show of thumbs up, how many of y'all have been out in public? And you hear a black woman on the phone. Ah, oh, girl, yeah. Oh, he. I sucked his dick last night and he banged me so hard. They talk loud as fuck to make sure you hear everything they saying. Because they trying to get DNA. They trying to get DNA. I done seen it a billion times, man. It's, it's, they want everybody in their business because they want all that attention. My own sisters do it. It ain't. I'm not just talking about other black women. My sisters do it. Loud as fuck. Wearing clothes is too tight. Stuff they should probably like leave to the younger women. No, girl. Oh, just everybody know their business. Let's get to this here next call. Yes, your own. Hello? Okay, if you're listening to the background, if you're listening to the feed in the background and you don't answer, I'm just going to hang up. I ain't got time for all that. Hello? Hello? Uh-huh. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. 
<laughs> What's up? Excellent. Um, I, I do understand where you're coming from, definitely, on some aspects, but... Um, I'm always curious why you use such definitive language. Like, why do you say all? Because as a black woman, um, all the things you're struggling with are all the things I've struggled with making friends with other black women. I don't have any other black friends. Um, and black men make fun of you if you sound a certain way or they say you act a certain way. So mm -hmm. all the things you're struggling with, I don't think they are strictly issues that black men are dealing with, but issues that just being black in general or being a person in involved with our community is dealing with so why all well you did you were you here earlier when i talked about rich and successful black women who were acting ratchet and ghetto i don't know if you're familiar with it um, but uh i talked about uh beyonce her and her sister were in the elevator with jay-z beyonce's husband and these are two rich powerful black women I mean, Beyonce's sister is not as powerful as Beyonce, but she's a millionaire. She's got money. She's given a good life. And she attacked Jay-Z in this elevator. And she went crazy. Punching him, kicking him, scratching him, spitting on him. Ratchet behavior. Even though she's a good-looking black woman with millions of dollars. And the same thing with Ray Rice. His wife, beautiful woman, got money, nice lady. One night, she just goes off half-cocked, goes crazy, and acts ratchet. And Ray Rice loses his NFL career because he knocked her unconscious after she kicked him in the nuts and spit in his face. My point is this, and I'm talking from years of experience. Every black woman that I've ever encountered in the hood, in the suburbs, in the cities, I don't care how nice they are. I don't care how beautiful they are. They all have ratchet in them, and it comes out at certain times in their life. Some women it comes out early, other ones it comes out late, but it always happens. They always do something ratchet and ghetto. And they always tend to have ratchet ghetto friends. I've met like several really amazing black women. Smart, pretty, skinny, cause you know all, all black women get accused of being fat, but I've met some that are skinny, nice demeanor, they got a beautiful voice, and all their friends are fat rhinos with three kids apiece. And 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 I don't understand why would this beautiful woman hang out with all these elephants. But then I, underst I understand why. It's the same reason an affluent black man hangs out with thugs. Because no matter how bad they are, you want to be accepted by your own people. That's why you have NFL players lose their careers because they go back to the hood to hang out with their thug, drug dealing friends. Because even though they made it out, they can't let go of those people. Some black women are exceptional, but they can't let go of the thug, ghetto lifestyle. Even if they're living in the suburbs, they still have thug, ghetto-ass friends. And, like, if, if, you're, if you're in a group of women, let's say, let's say you're the prettiest one, and you got a bunch of rhinos with you, and a group of guys are headed your way, we're going to avoid you, not because of you, but because of the group that you're with. Nobody wants baby mamas and loud, crazy fuckers. And you good-looking women, y'all ruin yourselves by hanging with those women. That's why I say all. Because I feel like if you're hanging with them, you're seeing the shit that they do and you don't say nothing, you're condoning it. If your friend got three kids by three different dudes and then she's fucking another dude raw, as her friend, shouldn't you tell her to use birth control? Or put on a, or make the man put on a condom, but no, the the pretty ones sit back and just watch that shit. Y'all don't say nothing. So what are, what are we supposed to do as men? I don't see, and and as a woman, that's what's weird to me is because my friends aren't like that. None of us have kids. Well, None you of smart. Us really have kids. I mean, I have. Well, I maybe it's the fact that my mom had was married and had me at 27, so she had me a little late. So yeah. for me, um, having having a bunch of kids is is quite ignorant. But as far as I'm concerned, there's I know there's other black women who are similar to me, and when we actually do get a chance to meet each other, which I will admit is rare. Yes, it is. We have the same. <laughs> we have the same similar issues and we'll say, she'll say, you know, none of my friends are black. Usually my friends are Asian or white, which is usually the case because 
the loud thing, yep. that situation where I was raised, it doesn't work out very well. And the men that we do want to attract, they're not going to be attracted to it. So I end nope. up not having any friends who look like me. And it's hard because I hear podcasts like this and I hear things like, you know, like I said, those terms that say all black Well, I, I'm going to tell you something. Then, I'm going to tell you something. I When I say all are ratchet, that doesn't mean that they're all run around ghetto. When I say all black women are ratchet, it's just like I described. You all have these moments where you act just like every other black woman. But that don't mean you can't be a good black woman. Like, if, you're, if your ratchetness is in moments, that's fine. I, most men can deal with that. Like, let's say you have a ratchet moment um, once every five years. You just go the fuck off. That's acceptable for a black woman. But imagine the imagine the ones I'm talking about who are ghetto and ratchet 24-7 all the fucking time. Even as a woman, you can't even hang around somebody like that. So ask, I want you to answer no. this. If as a woman, you can't even have friends like that, how can you expect black men to have wives like that? <laughs> I don't blame black men for not wanting wives like that. And I definitely can understand because I don't want friends like that. And because of how I grew up, so I, when I was stay in high school, it, there was 300 people in my school. All of them were white except for me and one other, pers one other person, and it was another woman. And her, she was very alternative, like heavy metal and things like that. So all they know of black women is black women like us. And so when we go out into the world, it's hard for us to even meet black men or black women. It's hard for me to meet black men because they say I sound like a white girl. I don't think I sound like a white girl. I just don't. I'm not really too loud. I, well, you know, I kind of keep. One of my guys metal, in the chat said, said, said your voice was mind fucking him. <laughs> you do have a nice voice. <laughs> but look, I get I get accused of being a coon. <laughs> I get accused of being a coon. Yeah, I, get I get accused. accused of I get accused of licking the white man's ass. I get accused of being an Uncle Ruckus, Uncle Tom. But I always say this. I love black people. That's why I want to get rid of the ratchets and the thugs because I believe that well, they you are what's destroying you us. You love them enough, you want to change. Yeah. Well, listen. If I didn't care, this is how you can know I'm telling the truth. I don't talk about stuff I don't care about. I have several channels where I discuss all kinds of stuff. This channel is my best one. It does the best because I'm the most passionate about this because I my own sisters are doing some of the stuff I complain about and I tell them right to their face like my, my older sister I don't even speak to her anymore because I can't talk to her without oh, being wow. honest and telling her to, that the ratchet shit got to go she's 45 and she's still acting like these little 25 year old ghetto girls I can't deal with it so I tell her don't fucking talk to me I'm I don't want black I people to misunderstand that. me I don't like ratchetness I don't like thugs and they are but well we here Here's a prime example. When the last time you've been to Chicago Southside? Um, never. <laughs> exactly. Or do you plan on visiting Chicago Southside? I've been once, and that was the worst experience ever. But exactly, it's um, it's I a scary fucking to place, ain't it? Individual place. Oh, yeah. it's horrible. It was terrible. Yeah, was and that's what I want to get rid of. So disrespectful in my life. <laughs> well, that you you probably need to. I'm gonna have to do a, a separate stream on this. But I actually have, I talked about this thing called the Chicago City Plan. I'm going to do a separate stream on it because people need to hear about it. But I actually, I want to I wanna do something about these people. Now, in your, in your particular situation, I'll be honest with you, you sound like you can do whatever you want. Why, why would you even want to bother with black dudes? You sound pleasant enough and nice enough to date whoever you want. I mean, unless you find a black dude on your level, why bother? There's no law to say black people have to be together. Of course not. Of course not. And I and I think it comes down to natural selection, and that's kind of what you're sort of pushing right now. Is that yep. whole you, not eugenics? Because that sounds so harsh. Yeah. But if we stop letting those people mate, then we'll eventually phase that type of behavior out, and the strongest will survive, which are probably people who are, I know are people who are more intelligent. You know, people who have more common sense, who know how to keep up their neighborhood and different things like that. Because I know my mom and my dad strive their whole life to keep me away from that yep so yes it's natural selection good, those, those natural are good parents that. good parents <laughs> because i'm gonna tell you yeah, straight up there are a lot of black girls growing up who they their their mom basically trains them 
Um, I have a um, a cousin. Um, I haven't talked to her in like maybe a decade, but she was telling her daughters to find the dude with the most money and the biggest rims on his on his car. She that's what she was telling her daughters, and I tried to explain to her that I tried to explain to her that she's setting her daughters up to just be hoes because those kind of guys are just gonna use them for sex. But she didn't care. Well, you're setting up to be drug dealers, really. But Pretty much. I mean, I guess. I mean, well, look, I'm a, I'm an ex-criminal. <laughs> part, part of the reason why I say a lot of stuff that I say, because I'm, I'm a former crip. When I lived in Miami, I was doing it all. Robbing banks, selling dope. I ran a trap house, all that stuff. I went to prison. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to tell you the moment in prison that, that changed me. I saw a man get stabbed with a sharpened toothbrush for an oatmeal cream pie. Oh my God. I'm not oh. kidding. This man was killed for I'm a fucking sorry, Debbie cake. That's, <laughs> that's the most gutter. <laughs> yeah, and that that's the moment when I realized that's the moment I realized that I didn't want to be a criminal anymore. Because it just simply is not worth it. And since then, I've raised well, a family, a started a business. Um, I, I try to tell these young dudes who listen to me, don't fuck your life up like I did and go to prison. It's not worth it. Trying to be cool, trying to be a gangster, a thug. None of that shit's worth it in the end. All it does is ruin your life. But I feel like I'm the best person to, to give that message because I, I lived through it. That's just like someone who who beat a drug addiction. They're the best person to counsel people who own drugs because they know what they're going through. Right. But uh, listen, I, I'll be real. I, I don't, when I say all of them are... I mean the ratchetness. I don't mean all black women are identical. I don't mean they're all ugly and fat. I just mean that ratchetness, that 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 hood anger that comes out. All black women have it in them. Like I don't know if you've used yours yet, but y'all all have it. My mom has it. So that's what I mean when I say y'all. Um, I'm the one that get angry when I I just get silent. I just don't say anything. Wow, you are a white woman. You sure you ain't trolling us? Cause that's what my woman does when she get mad. No, she just shut up. Well, look, well, I mean, um, if I say something in the chat, you'll be able to see my picture. I'm definitely a black woman. Um, okay. The reason you asked me, you said, so why is it that I'm looking for a black man? Um, I'm not looking. The one thing too I've kind of noticed is that when you are a certain way, you don't have to look for yep. anybody. I've noticed that in my life is one. So I never have to really go through this whole like I don't need a man. I don't need because I feel like. I can get one, so it's not really an issue to be resentful in that kind of way. Yeah. And also, just the numbers are off. I, I think I watched one of your cast once, and you said there's like a six to one ratio of women to men. That well, makes that yeah, really, um, really it, difficult. My whole life, I've dated white guys, and yeah. I don't like the one black guy I tried to date. Um, I went out of town for a week and asked him to watch my apartment, and when I came back, he destroyed it. So Damn. I kick him out. <laughs> yeah, so um, it hasn't really been the greatest experience. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't know if you watch the Boondocks, but Uncle Ruckus has a song on there, and it, the name of the song is Don't Trust Them New Niggas Over There. You need, li <laughs> you need to listen to that song, because I'm going to tell you straight up, I would never leave a black anybody in my house while I'm out of town. Never. I'm so you. You're lucky your apartment wasn't empty when you got back. And I'm just gonna keep it real. Uh, destroy it. You can work the with. Was empty. <laughs> Wait a minute. What was empty? The fridge was empty. Um, there was trash all over the floor. See, as soon as I got back that day, I'd never, I never ever have felt so offended because I've worked for that and I've maintained that. And I know there's a lot of young men and just young people in general who don't have their own situations like yeah. they don't live alone they you know they're with their parents or have roommates i've worked my butt off to be able to do that and so for me to come home and have my house destroyed um, oh. the first thing i did was cry and i told them to get out because that for me is just and but you know what i know for a fact the white guys i know would have never done me like that well and that's sad for me to have to you know it. what listen you're you're making my point see that's what I mean by ratchets and thugs. Ratchets and thugs are the same. They're, they're, they're just different genders. But they're the same kind of people. They're selfish, greedy. They don't care about other people. They don't care what you do for them. If you buy them, if you buy them a Lexus, they'll get mad that you didn't buy them a Ferrari. I mean, I'm serious. 
<laughs> you cannot please these people. That's why I advocate for black men and in your case, black women of means who are affluent, working, taking care of their business to not deal with ratchets and thugs. I'm going to tell you, I can't count how many times I've seen successful black women dating thugs, dating guys wearing a little wife beaters and braids and sagging, sagging pants. Like you got women who are lawyers and doctors dating these punks. I don't understand Even this infatuation with those. Even still have that mentality, though. I've met successful black men. They, like you said, they still hang out with people from the ghetto, yep. and they still exercise that ethos of, especially when they meet someone. I mean, black men have been so disrespectful to me when I've met them. They make fun of the way that I talk. They make a uh, one guy told me closed legs don't get fed. I mean, they're saying yep. things to me that are just have been really disrespectful. So. You know what I end up doing? I say I'm comfortable where I'm at. Well, I'm comfortable when, with the type of guys I date. When a, guy tells, legs, when a guy tells you closed legs, when a guy says closed legs don't get fed, they saying they that really because they want to fuck you, but you ain't giving it to them. They begging basically. That's what that is. That's that's oh, just so a. So then he insults the way I look. Yeah. And then he goes for that. Oh, yeah. Well, you're acting like you're better than I am. Well, I mean, yeah. That's the typical. That. That's the typical I'm nigga for you. I got. A, I have an ex friend. We were friends for twenty five years, and we're not friends anymore. But I'm gonna tell you what he used to do every time a, a woman told him no. As soon as he asked a woman for a number or whatever, and she said no, he would say, "Fuck you, then, bitch. You ugly anyway." Uh, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. A lot of black dudes do that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Look, you need to keep dating white men. Sound like to me, you listen. I, I'm gonna tell you something that's more important than race. I do, but... Let me tell you something that's more important than race, class. This is what I try to teach these guys. When I was running around the streets doing thug shit, I was low class. When I started a business, start making real legit money, start taking care of a family, I elevated to a different class of people. So all the people in the class I used to be a part of, I don't communicate with them anymore. And I know it's harsh. It's hard to cut off people you've been friends with for decades. But let's say you hit the Powerball tomorrow and you had $700 million. All the people that oh, you're friends with God. right now are no longer in your class. Time to elevate yourself. I tell people this all the time. It's harsh and it sucks, but when you elevate in class, you got to elevate to friends of that same class. You can't keep hanging with the same people. I'm telling you, because if you do, those people are just going to drag you back down to where you were. If you want to elevate yourself, you have to learn how to let motherfuckers go. I do it all the time. I tell people, hey, no offense. I'm here. You're there. We can't hang out anymore. See you later. And I, it, I mean, it's a, it's, well, to some people, that's horrible. But you got to do it if you want to excel in life. Well, you can't grow if you're stuck in the same pot. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? So I understand. You kind of have to, like, break free of that. I love you guys, and I love, like, all the memories we had then. <laughs> but if you guys aren't moving with me, it's Goodbye. a problem. Because yep. then, yes, yes, yes. Well, then I have to leave you behind, which sucks. But I got a guy that's been on the line for... Really wanted to do this. I got a guy that's been on the line for 20 <laughs> minutes. Even though you're as pleasant as all get out. Let me get this guy, because he's been holding a long time. I appreciate you calling. Listen, you can call anytime you want. Uh, my chat's going crazy. They love your voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Well, hey, and um, I'll still be here. So all right. thanks for having me and talking to me. I'll Have shoot it. Day. Anytime. Thanks. Look, guys, even I found a pleasant black woman. See there, I told you. Not all black women are horrible. Look at it. They all look. Y'all need to get over that. How many y'all, oh God, her voice. Y'all doing the It's Anime Girl thing. Let's get this next person. He's been holding a long time. Hello. I click on it and then they hang up. Hello. Yo. Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, you a bitch ass nigga. Well, um, I'm a bitch ass nigga. Mm. Um, no, a bitch ass nigga is a dude who calls in to cuss at somebody they don't know. And then they call back from the same number. That's a bitch ass nigga. You just called to cuss at me and then you call back. 
That's a bitch ass nigga. You do realize that, right? You're doing what ratchet black, but what ratchet black chicks do. You're calling in to talk shit to a dude you don't know. That's this. This guy was raised by a single black female in the projects because I hang up the call and he called right back. Guys, who do y'all know who does that? Who's the only group that keeps calling you back when you hang up on them? Y'all know the answer. There the number is again. Same number. Dude, I'm not going to answer it. You just cussed at me for no reason. So I'm not going to answer you. You call back as many times as you want. I'm not answering it. You had a chance to come on and talk like an adult. And you chose to start cussing instead. So I'm going to keep on denying your call. I don't care. You can fill the screen up. I'm not going to answer you. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Whatever happened to dialogue? So this, this lady right here, Naya West, who I just talked to, she came on and pleasant. That's what I'm talking about. See, there are black women who don't fit the, the stuff that I talk about, and I appreciate her call. But then you got to come right back to this guy. And he just called again. Hang on. Let me show y'all something real quick. Let me see if it'll come up. This number right here, y'all. This dude right here that I called four times. Right here. I'm going to hang up on him again. That's the dude who called and called me a bitch. Like, you really think I'm going to let you, you think I'm going to let you on my line? Yes, he got the BTM bad. He got it bad. Hey, look, it is what it is. I ain't even mad at the dude. I ain't even mad at him. But every time he call, I'm going to hang up. I don't care. Because, look, I ain't got an answer. I, I, I do the talk thing because I want to, not because I have to. It's just an aspect of my show. But I can do the show without it. Anyways, back to more of my talking points. This idea that every time you ask a black woman to rank herself or rank herself, this idea that they all say 10 is a problem. If you go to Google right now and type in black women, Google filter tries to give you the typical pictures of black women. And all the pictures are pretty much pleasant to look at. So you have to add words like ratchet and ghetto to the search in order to find the actual black female community. Because this woman here, Naya, she is one out of 10. It like she, listen, you remember when I tell you guys, finding a good black woman is like sticking your hand in a barrel full of snakes. Okay? You got 50 snakes. 49 of them are poisonous. One of them is non-poisonous. Stick your hand in there. Find the non-poisonous snake. That's how hard it is to find a good black woman. That's how hard it is. Hey, guys, check this out. Y'all saw me delete this dude's number, right? Look who back. This right here is the BTM virus. He done called back. Y'all saw me delete his number. He back. Now he done hung up. See, I'm making a fool out of this loser. Um, You know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. I ain't even got to say it. Y'all know what time it is. Hit it. Get out that woman house. Get out that woman house. You need. Get out that woman house. You need. Get out that woman house. Get out that woman house Get out that woman house With your big old grown ass
get out that woman house Get out that woman house You're 45, 45 This dude keep calling back, y'all That's some bitch-ass nigga them right there And there he is again <laughs> he done called back again. Look, y'all. He back. Like, this right here is some straight up, straight up punk shit. No, that's fine. I'm not even going to delete it no more. I'm just going to let him sit there on hold. Let's see how long he stays on hold. Let's try that. <laughs> I don't get it, man. These young dudes, listen, man. And I'm. I'm going to switch gears real quick. These young black dudes. What makes y'all think people scared of y'all? Like every time I'm out in public and I see you dudes. Yeah, look, this person said, can you answer my call? Why? Ain't you the one that just cussed at me? Well, that's the same number. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Let's have some fun, guys. Let's have some fun. I'm pretty sure it's him, but let's have some fun. Hello? Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Sure can. Oh, thank God I finally on. Yeah, I ain't the guy cussing you out. I oh, okay. Some... Wait, wait, wait. Why are you thanking God? I'm the one that lets you on. <laughs> oh, uh... You know I'm an atheist, right? I'm just playing. Go ahead, man. You are God. How do we know that you're not a God in disguise like Sabrina? Hey, look, I ain't getting into that fucking mm -hmm. shit. Oh, what's, what's up? What you got for me? Uh, oh, I don't. I never thought I'd get this far. Um, <laughs> what do you think of Cardi B? What? Let me turn, turn you up my what mic. What do you think so of can... Cardi B? Um, I don't listen to her music, and I don't really care about her. I don't care about her, all the publicity crap about her. I don't watch any of her videos. Honestly, I'm not into that kind of music at all. Most of the music I listen to is uh, alternative rock, heavy metal. Um, I listen to Japanese music. I listen to uh, gangster rap from the 80s and 90s, like Tupac, Biggie, stuff, uh, NWA, stuff like that. I don't listen to a lot of female music. I don't like female rappers. Why? Why you ask specifically about Cardi B though? Oh well, we just listed the same. That's my music. That's the music I also like to listen to. Yeah, I've, I've never been a fan of female rappers except back in the early days, like Mia no, no, X. No, no, no. I mean, the music you listen to is the music I listen to. I like to listen to alternative rock and um, heavy metal, and I like to listen to NWA sometimes. I like. To so, well, you uh, asked but. you asked me in the chat about Cardi B, and then you asked on here. So, what I was saying was, why why the interest in her? What's like, what's the the question about her? I don't know. You just wanted to know my opinion about her. Yeah, I like. It well, I don't. Out, like, I don't really know much about her because I don't. I don't listen to the music oh, and I don't watch well, her videos. She's an extreme example of what you're calling the women. Uh, uh ratchet. Can I say that word? Yeah. Ratchet, yeah. Yeah, she's ratchet. That much I do yeah, know about her. Yeah. yeah. Well she well put it like this. She's a she's a, a ratchet celebrity, black woman. And that's my point that I'm trying to make. Like I was trying to tell Naya that called in. When I say that black women all the same, it's because they all have ratchetness in them. Not all of them let it out. Some of them go their whole life and never have a ratchet moment. But then you have other ones that are ratchet all the time. Cardi B is one of those people. She's ratchet all the time. But she's famous for being ratchet. So that's why she does it. Um, uh, okay. Okay, uh, what's it? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I like Breaking Bad. It's a good show. I haven't watched it in a long time. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, I like Jessica. I like Jesse. Um, what was I going to say? So, how do you feel about... So I know you don't like pugs, but how do you feel about bathos? About what? Bathos. 
back hoes? No back hoes. They're Mexican gangsters. Ah, be honest with you, I don't even think about that kind of stuff. Okay. Um. You have some really random <laughs> questions. I'll give you that. Well, yeah. Um. Shoot. TikTok, what do you think of that? TikTok? Like, TikTok? I mean, you probably don't, but what, no, uh, what do you think of all the kids joining TikTok? I think it's something that this generation does. It's something that I don't do, so I don't really care about it. it that, that doesn't mean it's a bad mm -hmm. thing. I just personally don't care about it. I've never used yeah. TikTok. Yeah, I understand. It's a generational thing, man. It's for young people. Shoot, I can't think of anything. Actually, ask you, like, what should I ask you? Dude, wait, wait a second, wait a second. What kind of question is that? You come on to ask me what you should ask me. That's weird. Like, you should already have this stuff. It's not like your brain is going firing in, like, ten different directions, dude. Look, you know what we're here to talk about. So, you should... Uh, Try to try to frame your question around what we're talking about. Maybe that can help. Okay. Um, I kind of like uh, I kind of like them. I kind of like ratchet women. You like ratchet women? Okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. What? Listen. Just because I don't like them, I've never told other people they can't. If you like ratchet women, go for All it, right. dude. Yeah, it's not. I ain't gonna marry them. I ain't gonna marry nobody. It's gonna be it. It's gonna be like I'm in my 20s forever. How old are you, by the way? 15. Oh, man, you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. You can't be on this line at 15 years old. The fuck? I had a feeling too, man. You can kind of tell, but that's why I asked him. Cause, like, listen, you can you can tell the difference between adults and and young people when they talk. He'll be talking about TikTok and all this other shit. So I just that's why I asked him how old he was. Cause I just had a feeling this guy wasn't he wasn't old enough to be on here. Look, man, if you listen, if you're not 18, don't fucking call me, okay? Cause I don't care about nothing a 15 year old cares about. All right, I'm 44. There's no way in hell I have anything to talk about with a 15-year-old. Nothing to talk about. I have a 13-year-old son, and I don't even talk to him. So no. Can't believe you're gonna call me here, 15 years old, talk about Cardi B. Cardi these nuts. Yeah, yeah, he ain't never getting married because he's going to be living with his mom his whole life. You know, come over here and talk about how do you feel about Cardi B. I'm 15. Get the fuck out of here. Trying to get me all hemmed up with YouTube. Yeah, he said he likes ratchets. Dude, you 15 years old, and you really think you're going to sit in my chat and cuss at me? Really? Oh, I'm going to take personal pleasure in this one. Bye. You 15 years old. That's the dude who just called right there. That's the one I just banned. You're going you gonna to get off my phone and then cuss at me in the chat. Hey, you 15. Man, you better go talk to your parents. You better go talk to your parents, dude. I'm not your daddy. Don't be calling up in here talking that shit to me. <laughs> Come over here and get mad because you got kicked off the line, old buster. Yeah, that, that's crazy, man. Man, I had a bunch of videos in my Discord that I was planning on getting to. Like, uh, I, I let me see here. 
Uh, oh, did, man, listen, I want to tell y'all about this, man. This twenty, this twenty-two year old dude, black dude, killed his mom because she told him to get a job. This dude killed his mom. His, this woman told him to get a job, and he murdered her. Black dudes today ain't shit, man. Hang on a minute, though. I got I got a couple of videos. Oh man, I somebody told me about this. I I was gonna do a separate video on this, but since this is a black dude, this actually falls into the category of black community. So I want y'all to see this. Hang on. I will set it up for y'all. This dude got demonetized by YouTube. Okay? His channel got demonetized. This is the segment that y'all need to understand. YouTube is not a job, guys. Some people manage to make it big on here, get a lot of money, but YouTube is a hustle because they can take it away like that. That's what I keep telling y'all. Let me shrink that down because um, I don't need to be completely covered up to do this. Okay. By the way, his music is loud. He has his music set way too loud. Just telling y'all now, so y'all don't think that is me. Shit is just real stressful. Crying actual tears. Actual tears. Because he got demonetized. I am not playing with y'all. Somebody told me about this this morning. And I went and, and I couldn't believe it when I saw the video. Actual tears. Over, be, over being demonetized. His name is, his name is King Blitz. YouTube is not a career. What are you talking about? This is his career. This is not a career. You think this is a career for me? This is a hobby. This is a hustle. This is not a career. I'm good, don't. Playing the sad funeral music, crying. Like, man, they be playing up this shit. And guess what, guys? Guess what? Guess what's in the description? I give y'all a hint. It starts with the letter P. <laughs> you already know. You already know. I know we gonna have a few weirdos and it's like, bro, how the fuck are you over there <laughs> shedding tears? Man, I gotta, I gotta be honest, man. I gotta be honest. I be goddamn if I'm gonna cry. I done had two different channels demonetized. One of them got demonetized twice. You know what I did? I changed the content, started over from the 30-day mark, and after 30 days of putting up fresh content, they put the monetization back on the channel. No tears involved. This nigga literally crying, oh, crying. Do you remember the old, the old saying, there's no crying in baseball? There's no crying in YouTube. Or some of the monetization. The fucking funeral music is just killing me here, man. Man, this is a lot deeper than that.
guys, you know that YouTube used to be um, a platform where you posted shit for free, right? Google are the ones that took over and added the uh, AdSense thing. But YouTube, for years, nobody got paid for their videos. Nobody got paid. A lot of people started on YouTube back when there was no money involved. It was just broadcast yourself. Now it's broadcast yourself as long as you get paid for it. You ain't got to tell me. This makes me look like a bad person. Okay? You ain't even got to tell me. But I'm the fucking bad guy. I'm supposed to look like a bad person. But, you know, I'm finna make myself look like an even worse person. To become great on YouTube, <laughs> we must all climb the wall of dicks. My child, there's not much time to waste. This is your moment. Make it count, boy. When you don't want to wear female underwear, when you don't even care what other people say, I've done a lot of shit just for attention, just for attention. Give me attention. Yeah. <laughs> you 
said you skipped my dick. Man, I don't care what nobody say, man. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Hold on, let me catch my breath, man. Hold on, goddamn. I done fucking kill myself. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah, I had to hit my asthma pump on that one. Goddamn. <laughs> you skipped my dick. God, I just want to. <laughs> I just want to try to think about this for a minute, man. <laughs> just tell another nigga you skipped my dick, man. For real, man. That's fucked all the way up. Oh, all right. <laughs> this is why I need to stop playing that fucking song, man. That's it. I'm going on Prohibition. That song cannot be played no more, man. God damn. Oh. <laughs> you skipped my dick, man. Goddamn. <sighs> man, I'm sorry, man. This shit funny, man. <laughs> this man i i revel in other people's pain i know but come on man all it takes is 30 days and they'll re-monetize your channel holy shit i'm sorry man if y'all logged on if y'all logged on here and y'all niggas seen me crying like this, I will have no subscribers. <laughs> Everybody be like, man, I, I done lost respect for you, man. And I know for a fact that's what will happen. They're like, I lost respect for you. I'm out. Oh, man. Mm. Why does everybody care about that? We got a, we got a request in. Hold up a minute, y'all. We got a request. Time to hook you fellas up. I'm sorry, King of the Queens. I'm trying to collect my son. The fuck? It's not about being demonetized.
It's not that they just took it away and I'm just sad. You know? Man, look, man, how many times I have to tell y'all? YouTube can do anything they want with any channel. Because when you sign on to YouTube, you agree to their terms of service. They can demonetize this channel right now. And there's nothing I can do about it because I agree to the terms of service. Yes, YouTube gets shit wrong. They make a lot of mistakes. And the creators have to pay for those mistakes. But they still have the right to do it. It's their platform. It's, it's just the way it is, boys and girls. That's how business operates. You don't have to like it, but you have to respect it. Somebody wrote in his stem chat, it's like getting fired from a job. Oh, hell no. Let me blow this shit up so y'all can see that damn. Look in the, the right, the bottom right, right there. Y'all see what my cursor is? Look at this shit. It's like getting fired from a job. <laughs> Holy shit, man. <laughs> If it was like getting fired from a job, then you would get severance pay, you would get unemployment benefits, you would get insurance. So, no, it's not like getting fired from a job. Because if it was like getting fired from a job, he would get an unemployment check. He's not getting an unemployment check because it's not a job. Look, if you quit a real job, and you say, I'm going to do YouTube and I'm going to treat YouTube like my job. You got a right to say that, okay? You got a right to say, I'm going to treat YouTube as, as a job. But just because you say that doesn't make it an actual job. It just, it just, that's not how it works. I got tears in my eyes too from laughing. <sighs> The issue is way deeper than that. Okay, he got Streamlabs uh, running. That's a donation app. Then he got Patreon. Like, this is why I don't understand why these dudes... I don't understand why these dudes be crying when they get demonetized. If you got a Patreon and Streamlabs and all this other shit, if your content's good enough, then you will get donations. I see people who suck on YouTube to get donations. Like, there are a lot of people, that content is terrible. And people donate to them. I was watching this guy last night, one of the worst live streams i ever seen. Folks donating hundreds of dollars to him. And it was terrible. I mean, yeah, exactly. There's a lot of people who get donations and shit. Patreon, PayPal, whatever. I wouldn't even worry about this shit if I was him. See, this right here, this right here hurts black men because there's this stereotype that black men are hyper emotional and crybabies. And here you got a black dude crying over demonetization. It makes us look bad and it feeds the stereotype. Man, there ain't no way I'm going to put this much emotion into to YouTube. Ain't no way in hell I'm gonna cry over this shit. I've had channels terminated. You guys remember my um my Darth Cancerous channel? It was like that channel was like one of my favorite channels because all I did was roast losers on that channel. It got three uh three community strikes in the same fucking hour. Like bam bam bam. YouTube lit my ass up, and next thing you know, I got an email telling me the channel was gone. And the only reason my other channels didn't come down with it is because all my channels are on separate emails. So that way, if one of them gets flagged, it don't take the other ones down with it. Because I made that mistake once before having my channels tied together. So now all my channels have different emails. So like if this one gets flagged down, it won't bring down my other channels. But um, like <clears throat> this right here, man, I'm sorry. 
I, I will never, and I mean never, cry about YouTube. Never. <clears throat> you know, I don't really worry about flagging that much anymore because now my content is not like it used to be. You remember my old content. Everything I said was flaggable. But now I've learned how to say things in ways to where uh, YouTube has a hard time getting to the getting to it when they flag it. And then the stuff that does get flagged, uh, I'm like I'm like ten and zero on appeals. Every time something gets taken down, I get it put back up again because I be winning on appeals like crazy. So that's why I don't really worry about getting flagged. Don't bother me. Yeah, the issue is way deeper than that, man. It's donation request. Like it keeps popping up in this thing. Donation request. Guys, let me take y'all to school. <clears throat> Let me take y'all to school real quick. Donations are not something that you request. Donations are not something that you ask for. Because the minute that you request it or ask for it, it stops being a donation. Donations are things that are given voluntarily by other people without you having to say a word. If somebody gives me $5, in the super chat and I didn't ask them for it. I didn't request it. I didn't bug them for it. Then that is a donation. But if I sit here and keep saying, guys, go to my Patreon, go to my subscribe star, go to my PayPal. If I keep saying that over and over and over, that's not donating. That's e-begging. It's a totally different thing. I get super chats every now and then. And these guys who give it, They've never once heard me ask for it. I thank them for it, but I've never said, please give me money. I've never done it. Because that is begging. That's not donations. I don't know why people don't understand this. Having the shit streaming in your chat, stream labs request, that's begging. Posting a Patreon in your description, that's begging. If somebody want to give you money, they'll give it to you on their own without you prompting them. I don't know why people don't get that at this point in, in the game. Everybody should know that by now. It's been a really, really strong See, this makes you look bad. No matter how fucked up this is, crying makes you look bad. Dudes are not, man, listen. Guys, I didn't even cry at my dad's funeral. Like, I don't know what happened, but as men, it's hard for us to cry about shit. I didn't cry at my dad's funeral. Then like three days after his funeral, I started crying about it. But at his funeral, I didn't cry. I think I was the only one who didn't cry until like way afterwards. And that's because we're men. We're taught to keep, you know, restrain that shit. This dude leaking like a faucet over YouTube. Like this is bothering me. This is cringeworthy right here. Come on, get yourself together, bro. Get yourself together, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. And it looks like he has a wedding ring on. That's a wedding ring. That's on the left. That's on the left hand, ain't it? And the yeah, that's a wedding ring. The ring finger. So that means he got an old lady. So your woman tolerates this. I'm just looking at his finger. That's a wedding ring. So you're married. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's just been really, really fucking stressful. And I've been pushing through it. And pushing through everything, man. And doing the best I can. This is your ring finger right here. This one. This the this is the ring. This is the finger that your wedding ring goes on. And that's where he has his ring. That's the only one he has on too, so that's why I'm assuming it's a wedding ring. But lately it just seemed like everything. 
Well, I heard enough. And I don't want to play too much of that, you know. That is depressing, to say the least. I No way I'm going to sit up and cry over this. I get flagged every day. Somebody's filing a copyright or a, a community thing or age restriction. Uh, I got a privacy complaint the other day. Listen, guys. When I show I show pictures of, from Google of black women, those are Google pictures. Somebody filed a privacy complaint over pictures that you can get off of Google. And when I wrote back to YouTube, I said, these pictures came off of Google. I didn't invade anybody's privacy. They're on Google. And I actually did a screenshot of the Google search and put it in my email and sent it back to them. And then they dismissed the, uh, the privacy complaint. But they actually filed a privacy complaint because I was using Google pictures. Basically, they were trying to say, you're using those black women's pictures without permission. The thing is, though, it's on Google. I don't need permission if I can Google it. But like I said, I get flagged all the time. I'm used to it. Like, these guys need to grow up, man. Oh, hold on. I got somebody on the line. Let me see what this is. Yes, you're on. What's hey, up? Hey, what's up, NBA? Uh, yeah, that was funny. We, uh, the dude was crying over YouTube and all that. Well, like, like, it's his dang. job, apparently. <laughs> Right, like what he need to get is a job application and stop sitting on here complaining about it. Well, crying ain't going to do nothing, that's for sure. YouTube can do whatever they want. Right. It's their platform. They own it. I know that. Every time yeah. I do a stream, I know that I could be flagged down at any time. And I accept it because I, I agree to the terms of service. That's just the way it is. Right. I, I heard you laughing. I was like, dang, it must be hilarious. I heard there was a sinner crying like a little baby like come, come on man hey some people can't hold their water well he sure didn't <laughs> hey i'm pretty sure it makes me a bad person for laughing at him but i'm sorry i couldn't hold it in because that's just really stupid to me oh no i no, no, that's good <laughs> i was laughing too so uh what's, what you got on the topic what's up oh yeah the, um and like you write about the uh, ratchets and stuff, like that's all they all they do is, is either one man that that's uh you know that that high, has high standards and all that. The so-called high value man, as they call it. Exactly. Well, I don't believe in those stupid terms. You know, I don't really care about all that high value crap. I think if you're a man, you're a man. Simple, just act like a man, right. and it don't matter matter if you high value or not. All that is internet talk, and I don't do internet talk. I speak real. And the fact is, I'm a man. I don't need to be high value to be a man. A man pays his bills, takes care of his kids, pays his taxes, follows the law. That's a man. And, and, and then most of those ratchets, they, they have like your kids at home still, like 40 or, or, or even like or, or way older and stuff. But like, like that, like they need to. Yeah, get out the house. You go get their own place, but they they don't want to do it. Well, hey, that's them. They the ones got to live with the right. choices they make. <laughs> I don't, cause I don't deal exactly. with them. Exactly. Hey, if you deal with them, then you got to deal with all they bullshit. I don't. I made the decision a long time ago that they just not worth it to me. But I never tell people not to. If you want to date black women, go for it. That's your business. I'm not going to join you in that because I just know what, what it's all about. And I know it's simply something that I don't want to do. I did it when I was young, oh. and I don't want to do it again. Oh, man, me neither because, uh, uh, nah, they loud, they annoying. They, they always, uh, nah, nah, it hey, ain't even worth it. If you, can, if you can do better, do better. That's what I tell people. If you can do better, do better. Don't just settle for something. There are a lot of dudes in the hood that are dating these women because they have no choice because they settle for what they can get in their neighborhood. You got a lot of black dudes right. that have never left their neighborhood. They stay in the same spot talking to the same women over and over. 
because they're too scared to get outside of the hood and branch out and do other stuff. I know people that never leave their neighborhood. They never go to other places. They just stay in the same place. And that's why they date the same ratchet women over and over again. And, and, that, and that's why they never uh, get uh, get better in life because they, they, they stuck in doing the same old routine. Hey, I learned that early that you had to get out of your neighborhood. Because if, if all you do is you see the same stuff all day, every day, and the same people, then that's what you're going right. to believe that exists. You're going to think that's the only thing out there. But once you step outside of your neighborhood, you see there are different kinds of people, different types of neighborhoods, different stuff, you'll start to do better. I tell people all the time, you got to branch out. Because if you don't, you're going to be stuck right. in reverse. Right. It's more more things to life than just being, you know. And it ain't just about finding women. You know, my message ain't just about finding women. Because I know a lot of people on here, all they're trying to do is help people get some pussy. I, the stuff I talk right. about is guys making themselves better. Like I told one guy, before he even thought about a girlfriend, he needed to get a job and a car and his own place to live. Because... One thing that makes black men look bad is there are so many black men living with their girlfriend or living with their mama or their grandmama. And you got black women who are who have careers that own homes. They have nice cars. They, uh, they got money in their pocket. And it makes black men look bad that we can't keep up with our women. And, 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 that's, and that's another problem, too, because that's how... Uh we be having gays and transgenders and all that type of stuff because they, you know, raised up by women. Yep. And, and you know how that ends up. Well, I talked. Like I actually did a stream about that. Well, we did a stream about this trans person, and it's exactly what I said. When you're raised up around oh, yeah. ratchet, ratchet black women, you turn into a ratchet black woman, even if you're not really a woman. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw it. I saw that video. Yeah, that was a hilarious stream. That's what happens when you don't have a dad. And you're raised up by ratchet black females. You be, you become the right. thing that raised you. Yep. Yep. So it is what it is. They think think about common women and stuff. Was they they shouldn't be even thinking about that. You know, they should seek help. Like saying, hey, I, hey something's wrong with me. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm a, a, a part of this. A according man. to them, according to them, stuff. that we're we're the ones who are wrong. They 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 don't think anything's wrong with them. They think it's normal for a six foot two man to to put on wigs and fake nails and makeup and act like a woman. They think it's normal. And they think we're the we're racist and homophobic and bigots because we tell them it's not normal. So, you know, I just avoid them kind of people. Okay? When I see them in public, I just avoid them. I don't speak to them. I just go on about my business. Cause if that's how you want to live your life, go right ahead. Right. Only time I interact with them, only time I interact with them is when they try to hit on me, and I tell them politely, "Don't right. fucking talk to me." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's their choice. You know, if they want to be like that, let them be like that. But well, a lot of them I, say they're a lot of them say they're born that way, but the fact is, it's just it's something that they learn. Yeah, right. You're not born gay. You're not born trans. You learn that shit from other people. It exactly. is a proven fact that kids who hang around or have gay parents or trans parents or whatever, those kids emulate that behavior and they copy it. Boys right. who grow up with strong dads turn into strong men. Simple as that. Because they already know. They already know that the, uh, the father ain't going to tolerate that. Now that they go slap some sticks into them. Yeah, women put up with that. Men don't. Like, I told my woman, she was like, well, if my, one of my sons was gay, I would still love him. I said, yeah, I'm going to still love my kid, but I'm not going to accept homosexuality. Right. I, I'm going to love my kids till I die, regardless, but I'm not going to sit back and support gay shit. I'll tell you flat out, son, I love you, but you can't be here because I don't support that lifestyle, and I never will. Right. If you need help, yeah. I'll do whatever for you. I'll help you get an apartment, help you buy a car, give you some money if you need it, all that stuff. I'll still do all my dad stuff, everything the dads are supposed to do. But I'm not going to say hi to your boyfriend. I'm not going to go to your gay wedding. None of that shit's going to happen because I don't agree with it. Uh, I don't support it. 
Yeah, yeah. If, if he if my son asked me to do the same thing, I'm like, no, I can't do that. Cause, uh, I mean, if you want to do that, go right ahead, go right ahead, and marry him. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna I'm not, stop him, but I'm just not gonna support it, and I'm not gonna be a part of it, because exactly. just because you have kids don't mean you have to trade in your own values and your belief system. Just because you like a lot of people think you're supposed to do anything for your kids. No, there's some things where you can draw the line. And right. one of those things is my pride. You not I'm not trading in my pride just because I'm a dad. I don't have to accept homosexuality just because it's, uh, my kid wants to do it. No, I don't have to accept that shit, and I'm not going to. And I will tell my kids in a minute I don't accept it. I don't believe in it. Go on with that bullshit. Exactly. Well, shit, man. I gotta I gotta get ready to get off here, man. Cause uh, I've been on for two and a half hours. Right. I gotta jump off this damn thing. But I appreciate the call, bro. Uh, no problem, man. All right, let me turn this phone line off for somebody else call. Thank yeah, you that... for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. It does not make you a bad parent to tell your child that you do not support that lifestyle. Like a lot, a lot of these people, they try to shame you. If you don't support the the, the gay or trans community, you're a bad person. I support giving you all the freedom to do whatever you want to do. You, you're an American citizen. You're a human being. You have the right to do whatever you want. I have the right to say I disagree with it. It's that simple. He means stop writing in capital letters, dude. Everything you've been writing has been capital letters. Stop writing in capital letters. It does not make you a bad person for saying you don't want to date black women. And anybody that tries to shame you and say that you, you should date black women, they don't have that right because they don't have the right to control what you do. It's your life. You got a right to date who you want. And if you choose if you choose to not date black women, that's your right. Okay, they ask you to stop using capital letters and your response is, fuck y'all. Well, no, fuck you. Goodbye. We gave you a chance to be like act, act like a human. And that's the route you take? Really? You're an idiot. Stupid motherfuckers, man. Tell them don't don't use capital letters. Fuck y'all. Why even go there? Ignorant, man. Anyways, I got some stuff I gotta get uh, get done offline um i actually got a channel i need to repair too and i'm um trying to think about a new name and stuff so i'll get on to that in a little while i'm gonna get up off this computer for a minute and um you guys know the routine leave some comments hit the like button if you haven't yet blah 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 y'all know the routine i'm gonna get my butt up off of here and i'll be back on a little while later on uh this evening uh -huh.